you had a chance meeting with the Prime Minister in. In January 2003, the Prime Minister told you that he needed some more evidence, something that he wouldn't necessarily need to make public, but that he could use as a basis for personal assurances to the Cabinet, the PLP, and to key allies like Chirac and Putin and regional leaders, that Saddam was in breach, but he hadn't yet seen this. You had had a brief from SIS referred to as silver bullets, in which you told him that, while the body of available reporting was highly damning, none of the reports could yet be termed a silver bullet. The Prime Minister then said that he was surprised and pleased that you had accumulated as much as you had, but the essence of this was he needed something more. Two questions about that. 1. Did this indicate, his pleasure to learn from you that you had got as much as you had, that he wasn't actually fully up to speed? that you were telling him something that he hadn't previously realized? Difficult for me to answer that. I don't know. I think he was very fully briefed at that point, but events were moving quite swiftly. He had been on holiday for a week or so. This was just after Christmas New Year. Events were starting to accelerate. Time was running out. And I think it was a time to gather together what we had from the inspections, from SIS reporting from what we thought was still there to be inspected, because from a variety of reporting, overhead and other sources, including liaison and so on, there were sites that were on a sort of shopping list for Unmoviac to look at, and one didn't know which one of these might turn up something that could be construed as a silver bullet. So I think what he was asking for there, and it was the principal reason why I wrote that and sent it back, was a stock take, where are we? And can we have an assessment of what's the likelihood of the unmoving process producing this kind of evidence? But this was also perhaps illustrating the pressure on SIS to produce something that the Prime Minister could use to justify supporting Bush, as he said, without necessarily having a second Security Council resolution, as you've also recorded. Yes, that was before the efforts to the real push diplomatically to secure. Yes, SIS was under pressure, but I mean, not unusual pressure. We were headed to war. The question of legality of British participation had not yet been resolved. At that point I think a second resolution. Evidence that would win that second resolution, even over French skepticism and Russian obduracy, all of that was in the balance. Did you sense that you were being asked as a service to find facts that would fit a policy that had by this stage already been determined? No. Clearly there's been a lot of comment on that. I think at that point, you know, there was that concern, but already by January, early 2003, we were in a different phase of activity, both on the intelligence side, diplomatically, and military preparations. So we were concerned that if the likelihood was that the Americans were going to go in, and I was in no doubt about that at all. Then the dilemma for the British government was do we stand with them, and what's the legal basis, and what's the position of the international community, that intelligence could play a very significant part in arriving at those decisions. So the pressure was very much there. If there was information about the state of Iraq's WMD programs and their intentions, we should do whatever we could to produce it. I didn't feel that that was political pressure. It seemed that that was the highest possible requirement at the time from the intelligence community. As you just said, the upshot of this conversation was that SIS were asked specifically to produce a stock take within a short period after the Prime Minister's return to London, to be presented through David Manning. Originally he said through himself, and then he corrected himself and said through David because of his diary. Was that stock take done? It was, yes. Was it then sent to number 10 directly? rather than through other channels. I can't remember. I think this was over the weekend, but from recollection it was done immediately. This essentially was something that was separate from the JIC, which was doing intelligence stock takes on a very regular basis for the Prime Minister. I think it was, yes. So it implies that he wasn't getting from the JIC quite what he wanted. 
I think the JIC moved on a different sort of cycle. I mean, it could easily have got it from the assessments machinery. Would he have got from your stock take something that was significantly different from what he was getting from the JIC? No. So why was he asking for it? I think the relationships with number 10 had become quite personalized. You mean SIS's relationships at the top? Yes. Too personalized? Some say. Your opinion? Yes. I don't think I need pursue this further. 